Howdy, folks. We are back with more Scrabble action from the 2023 World Scrabble Championship. As promised, we've got Will Anderson currently sitting in first place and representing the United States against Aussie Andrew Fisher, yet to be featured on stream, but with a nice 12 and 5 record. He's currently sitting in ninth place in this tournament, uh, just two games off the lead, both Will and Wellington at 14 and 3, and Alex Seaholm a half game behind them at 13 and a half. But still, with a lot of Scrabble to be played, this is anybody's tournament. Uh, Stefan, uh, tell me a little bit about Andrew Fisher. You know him, correct? I met Andrew back when I was reporting Word Freak, and I will keep saying that over and over again. I think uh, at the time, Andrew was representing England in international Scrabble play. Uh, he moved to Australia and has been representing Australia for the last 21 years. Andrew was a runner-up in the World Scrabble Championship uh, back in 2011, and uh, he's got other titles to his name. I think a UK title, a few Australia nationals. Uh, he is a formidable and long-standing player, one of the best players in the world for a long, long, long time. And it'll be interesting to see that kind of old blood in the Scrabble scene against some of the newer blood in Will Anderson. Will, of course, has been around for about a decade now, but uh, not, not nearly as established, although very much a solid player in his own right, as his 14-3 and three record would indicate. So very excited to watch this matchup. I've never seen Andrew play a game of Scrabble before, but I'm ready to be impressed. And I hope y'all at home are too, as we're getting ready and underway. Andrew to play first, and uh, we are getting tiles out. Good to see my buddy Will on the stream. He is uh, professing to be shocked at his run over the first two days of the tournament. Uh, he came in here feeling sick. Um, he's been wearing a mask for protective reasons came in when i say that i mean came to the scrabble players championship not feeling great he was unsure whether he was even going to make the trip from new jersey to las vegas before that first tournament uh he finished i think 11th in the twl division not up to his own standards but we were talking at the time and will said the thing that that he is constantly reminded of is how hard it is to win one of these and how lucky you have to be. Uh, he, of course, won the North American Scrabble Championship in 2017, and to this day talks about his great good fortune in having been able to do that. And I think Will, of course, underplays his own skill and talent and ability as one of the best players in the world and his ability to turn around after the SPC 31 games and switch dictionaries and be at the top of the table and start 12 and 0 in the world championships is a testament to his greatness. Yeah, will ever the humble guy. Uh, Andrew on that first turn, I would have absolutely played Uncoy as opposed to Kundi, not holding the O, but Andrew uh, with this play of Kundi is going to dodge uplifted on the triple word. And instead, Will forced a bingo just for 67. But a blank draw on the first turn, perhaps some of that luck Will talking about that you need to win one of these events. Uh, first turn blank, first turn bingo puts Will ahead 67 to 30 over Andrew, who is looking to respond. But UV on his rack, tough to score a ton of points with those. E moved, E M O V E D plays from the E and uplifted for 32 for Andrew. Moved plays to the D and unlifted for 33. Uh, D O V E D in the same spot. Or if he wants to get wild, he could look at playing off the V and the U together with the word like ovum and O Y or ovum and Y O for just 18. Uh, but lots of options here. Likely going to see E moved or moved if I had to guess out of this situation from the Aussie. Will's luck did not uh, translate onto turn two with three O's, two A's, and the B-E there. But he, you mentioned Will's uh, humbleness, and that is one of his defining traits in addition to being one of the great ambassadors for this game and a full-time employee of a Scrabble uh, company, Scopely. Uh, Will doing amazing work, which we can get into a little bit more during this game, to help promote the game and expand the reach of the game. Um, but I come back to that. Will's sort of 
can't believe his own good fortune sometimes. And again, maybe overplays it. Um, when I texted him after he went eight and no on day one, he wrote back, what the fuck is happening? And, <laughs> <laughs> and then when I, when I texted him after he was 12 and oh, he said, he said, uh, hold on one second. drawing ridiculously well uh humility absolutely one of will's traits but also being an absolute killer over the scrabble board and playing in great plays another one will let him have his moment of humility but absolutely. Will, it takes more than just good fortune just absolutely know at the world scrabble championship yeah you got to be more than lucky to win a nationals or a world you got to be incredibly good uh, will did point out to me when i asked him last night um after he was uh 14 and two, he said, yeah, let me count my blanks. It's going to be way up 16 games, 20 blanks. He said, so a little bit over, over the uh, expected, but you know, not ridiculous. He said yeah. he ate a couple of blanks late, a couple of double blank racks. Um, but every one of those blanks that you draw is one that your opponent doesn't draw. Wow. This is not what I saw. Huh? Coming. So Andrew has shown a, like a, a liking for vowels on each of these first two move, moves. Kundi over on Koi to hold an S, now moved here to hold E-U-S, sacrificing a substantial amount of points, but I guess he really does want to hold on to this E. Definitely a non-standard play I don't think many players would make in this situation, but perhaps he's got a plan. Let's see how it pays off for him with his draw. Uh, J, a Y, uh, so, so pull. Uh, he'll probably still have some points next turn. A A B E O O O the rag for Will, and that gonna give him a nice play of A V O through that V for 29. Or he could play B O O A Y to the Y and Kundi if he's looking to play a little bit longer. I'm not sure what I make of that move if I'm Will. You know, it looks like my opponent fighting through a rack of junky consonants. We know that wasn't the case for Andrew, hmm. but uh, is he looking to obstruct some of those bingo lines that have just been created and play OVA? Or is he looking to play out of this rack a little bit longer and get rid of more of these vowels? I do not know. There are a lot of E's in a bag of Scrabble tiles. That is surprising to sacrifice one when you can make a decent scoring play along the triple. Yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, Interesting decision for sure. And Will's going to drop Avo down right away. Andrew's sort of nodding like, yeah, I, I set that up. That's, that's what's going to happen. And uh, so... 29 points for Will puts him ahead 96 to 50. And Andrew now has drawn into a J tile that can help you score some points sometimes, but muck up your racks sometimes. Looks like he'll do the former here. Judgey, J U D G E Y, plays through the D and Cundy for 36 points, uh, miles ahead of the other options here. I think that's going to be the play for Andrew once he spends a little bit more time making sure there are no better options. It's a pretty effective way of cleaning up what is not the prettiest rack, but can be a very tantalizing scoring rack. And in this case, it is. It's a judgy coming down, uh, bringing Andrew to within 10 points, 86 to 96, as he survived the early bingo now from Will. And Will looks to play out of these vowels yet again. He will have B-O-O-A-I and A moved, another front hook that is valid in the Collins lexicon. Um, so B-O-O-A-I and a moved, likely the play for Will on this turn. It'll score 25. It'll get rid of four vowels. I think he's got to make that play here. Um, as maybe I, As I frantically <laughs> type in Ulu, Buai, a remote rural place as up in the Buai, Thoroughly lost, also Buai, B O O A Y, B O O H A I, New Zealand. Uh, some of that New Zealand Maori slang terminology makes some incredible words and some incredible vowel dumps in this game. So, uh, Collins, I think it's a lot easier to play out of vowels than the NWL background that I have. Uh, so, Buai is going to come down 25 points for Will. And Andrew, after shedding the J for a good amount of points, will draw into the X which he can also turn into points. We'll have a number of ways to do that. Ixia and JA kind of standing out as the solid option here, but also the nice ataxia from the AT at the bottom of the board, extending out for mm. 29. Ataxia will also 
set up the S that he is sitting on. So Ixia, a good play. Ataxia, perhaps a better one for Andrew. We'll see which decision he li- he decides to make here, but it's probably going to be one of those two. A move, obsolete word to stir up, to rouse. Also, it takes another O in the middle there. A-M-O-O-V-E. Wow, learning more and more every day. So a moves and vamoose would be a set of anagrams. That's cool. Cool. All right. So uh, Andrew now looking to cash in that X. Uh, Will has been involved in growing the Scrabble scene in a number of ways, primarily through his electronic uh, you know, media. He's got a YouTube channel that he's putting out videos that are getting even hundreds of thousands of views. If you haven't seen him yet, again, you've got to watch Will on YouTube. You've got to find him there. But there are so many other players in this room who have been involved in growing Scrabble in a number of ways. Um, you know, it's instrumental to talk about the youth scene and the youth movement growing in Malaysia and in Pakistan, but also in the United States, the school Scrabble scene here. Um, Stefan, what do you know about players who have helped grow the game in this room? Well, you mentioned Will in those videos. The, one of Will's videos, which is titled Ni- Nigel Richards, the greatest Scrabble player ever is underrated, is over 700,000 views on Will's personal YouTube channel. Um, he's got several other videos that are over 100,000 views apiece. Uh, he's been doing a Scrabble history series that have garnered around 50,000 videos of views apiece. That's more than a million views combined for Will's videos. And that's more than, to put it in one term that you might remember, Matt, that is more than the annual audience when Scrabble was on ESPN for six years in the mid-2000s, uh, including a couple of years when I believe you were a school Scrabble player and ESPN broadcast a show about that event. I was the color guy for that as well. So Will dropping a wonderful fungo. Beautiful. Two points with the beautiful overlap. Uh, that's got to hurt if you're Andrew, but Andrew with a nice pull, A-A-E-E-N-S blank. You expect to bingos with, uh, bingo with tiles this nice and yet no playable bingos for Andrew on this turn. He's going to have to aggravate over what he wants to do. Probably playing off AE, maybe one more tile. Uh, we'll see. Good options. Page through the PNG uh, or AE making Jaga and OE options as well. Yeah, Stefan mentions uh, ESPN tried to cover Scrabble for a few years, found there wasn't quite the audience. My uh, 15 minutes of fame was that I actually got to be interviewed uh, at the 2006 U.S. Open. I was the youngest player in the room. I believe I was 13 at the time, and I was uh, in contention to win the bottom division at that tournament until I choked it all away, a pattern that uh, I've become (laughs) infamous for. I choke every year at the Nationals and lose my last three or four games very consistently. But uh, yeah, Scrabble maybe had an audience, according to ESPN, didn't really work out that way. But all of a sudden now in this new internet era with shorter, uh, you know, shorter videos and more entertaining videos, I hope to see that audience grow. I hope to see a lot more people come into Scrabble and you guys at home, Help Will out. Help us get Scrabble on the internet. Make some videos, stream some games. You don't have to be good. In fact, it's probably better if you're not a world champion quality player because I want people to see Scrabble of a bunch of different ability levels. You don't have to be a world champion to get, to enjoy competitive Scrabble. You just have to enjoy playing this game. Set your own personal goals. I want my rating to be four digits. I want to qualify for the worlds. I, I want to beat Will Anderson at one point in my life. You know, everybody's got different goals and objectives, but let's get this game out there on the internet. Let's help grow the game of Scrabble. Uh, Stefan mentioned the Washington Post article about Wellington as well. Uh, There's a whole scene of mentorship and teaching and education uh, for Scrabble in Nigeria. And my understanding is that's also the case in Malaysia. So every time I hop on woogles.io to play games, there's uh, hundreds of users, it feels like, from Malaysia all on at the same time looking for games. Uh, So, yeah, uh, help us grow the game of Scrabble. These players in this room have helped grow the game of Scrabble as well, but it's going to take growth from the inside, from you and me and Stefan and all these other players. And, you know, we talked about, about youth Scrabble and how important that is. And in countries like Nigeria, one of the reasons that you see this gigantic contingent of players flying halfway around the globe is because there was support at, from a very young age. And you saw that in Thailand and you mentioned Malaysia and Pakistan and elsewhere. Um, it's a little more diffuse as everything is in the United States. And one of the struggles has been 
getting school Scrabble to be a uh, sort of consistent feature of the game in the States. Uh, Hasbro came back in to support the uh, school Scrabble championships, which I helped organize for the last two years. We held them in Washington, D.C., and that was great. We had Hasbro on board, Wingpo, one of the uh, U.S. organizing bodies, contributed uh, financially and organizationally. NASPA contributed support with uh, equipment and travel stipends. Marion Webster contributed, uh, and we held it at Planet Word, this wonderful venue, this museum uh, dedicated to language in D.C. So there are ways to do this. And as Will bingos with where to pad his lead. Killer bingo. Drops the huge. W and the H on those triple word squares. Andrew looking to bingo out of A-E-N-S blank. But uh, Will hits him first where for 86. Though Andrew will hit back. He's drawn into seed line, which plays in the line he created. Or he can look to play bingos that open this game up a little bit wider. If you're really looking to blow things open, if you're desperate, Etesian plays on the left side of where throwing this board wide, wide open. But I think C-Line probably the play here. Not quite that desperate, not yet at this juncture. C-Line, Collins only. Wish we had that one in TWL. And I guess the answer is we could have them all if we wanted. We could have them all, yeah. I, I think I've already made a, a vow to myself that when or if I ever decide to try to study these words again, they're going to be the CSW words. It is so cool watching players from around the world uh, come to these Scrabble tournaments. And now that I have finally graduated from college with a terminal degree and can't do this to myself anymore, I might have the means to travel around the world with a little bit more pocket money and a little bit more time. Uh, it'd be super cool to play Scrabble in Malta, in Nigeria, in Australia, in, in the UK. So, so we'll see. But, you know, definitely a useful word and, and maybe one I'll get to play one day. So C line comes down for Andrew, pulls him to 48 points behind Will Anderson. And Will's got a nice play here. Wetty, W E T T I E, plays through the I in Buai on that triple word square for 34. It also plays to the right side of Judgy, E W and Y E, for 30 points. Uh, but likely Wetty coming down in one of those two spots. If you are Will, here it comes 34 points. Puts and this is a good, this is a good time to point out how Will is one of the most adept at juggling the two lexicons. Um, for him to spot something like that instantly, uh, that is Collins only, and I believe it's Collins only, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but Will's ability to toggle back and forth um, after playing 31 games of TWL and now 32 of Collins is really remarkable, and it shows just with a kind of flexible, malleable, fast firing brain you need to be the best at this game um what a great spot instantly i mean the word was ba barely out of your mouth uh, after using quackle uh that will had arranged it and plopped it down on the board yeah and will's gonna have another incredible play here won't spoil it just yet but uh, chat figure it out there we go economic down to the sea in Kundi. There's no way that's getting blocked here. Wow. It's going to be 95 points, and that's basically going to put uh, this one away for Will. He won't miss that word, and I doubt Andrew will block it. Uh, he's trying to keep this board open. P-E-R-D-I-E -E to the E in Weddy. It looks to be a great play for him. Uh, P-I-R-L to the left side of C-Line, holding D-E-R looks like a good option as well. But I do not think Economic is going to get blocked here. I'm certain it won't be missed by Will, and that'll be a 95-point killer to give Will his 13th or 15th win of the tournament. Wetty, a wetsuit in New Zealand slang. Back to the back to the school conversation for a second, Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, you're temporarily in a city that has the greatest school Scrabble program in the United States, Philadelphia. They got more than a thousand kids playing Scrabble on a weekly basis. Most of them in the city. Um, they sent a team. They have sent, been sending a team of twenty to forty kids to the school Scrabble championship every year. Uh, in the last two and before the pandemic, they hosted the the school Scrabble championship for the two years leading up to the pandemic, one of them at the Philadelphia Eagles football stadium, which was really cool. 
Um, so that's a that's a, a a program that should be that should be replicated around the country and would get hundreds of more thousands of more kids to play and bubble up to these tournaments, these national tournaments. Uh, we've only got a couple of uh, former U.S. school Scrabble players in the world's uh, play in here. I believe Josh Castellano and Matthew O'Connor representing the United States. Um, are the only two. I'm going to have to run down that list one more time, but I'd love to see more, um, more action in more cities if we can find a way to get those kinds of programs replicated um, and get more interested players and teachers and schools to sponsor Scrabble um, as one of, its, uh, one of their, their top after-school activities. Um, that'd be a great thing. The Philly program is a public-private partnership with the City of Philadelphia Public Schools and various uh, private organizations that support it. And they do chess and Scrabble and theater and all kinds of outdoor after school stuff. Yeah, I mean, school Scrabble just, uh, it was an integral part of my life. I played the championship in 0, uh, 05, 06, and 07 back when I was eligible for it. And uh, teaches a lot of different things, teaches math, but also words, teaches kids how to be good winners and losers and sportsmanship uh, competition. So, cooperation, uh, Matt. You're playing in a team of two for School Scrabble. Absolutely. Uh, in School Scrabble, all teams of two, you got to learn partnership. You got to learn how to compromise and discuss and work together. Uh, so, a, a great way. And if you're watching this at home and you are a child, you're in elementary, middle, or high school, look for School Scrabble opportunities in your area. Uh, get involved. It is so fun, so rewarding, so challenging. Um, and if you've got kids at home, you're looking for an avenue for them. Uh, you're not thinking about, you know, sports, uh, Scrabble, a mind sport of its own, a great thing, great opportunity for your kids as well. Economic, of course, coming down for Will. He would not miss that bingo. We're going to put him ahead at 388 to 234. Just a tough break for the Aussie Andrew as Will will not stop scoring on him. He's got a disgusting play here this turn. It is very hard to spot but it is Yidaki, Y-I-D-A-K-I, down from the Y <laughs> in Kundi. 39 points, R-S leave. Wow, that's awesome. Can you say that again, please? Uh, no, because I'm sure I mispronounced it. Y-I-D-A-K-I, uh, a native Australian long wooden wind instrument played by the Aboriginal people of Arnhem Land. That is awesome. Wow. I'm hoping that we see that come down. That would be a brilliant play from Andrew. But alas, KI, a little more pedestrian, not quite as flashy, but understandable because, damn, Y-A-D-A-K-I, not the easiest word to find. And Will, doing what he does best, he'll bingo again here. Will's yeah. username online, Wanderer, but he's going to play Traveler here instead through that E. 62 more points and the scoring assault, the bingo assault, just not stopping. This will be his fourth bingo of the game and he'll get two more turns to try to hit another one after this as well. Yeah. This one's uh, pretty much GG. Uh, GG. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew does have a decent pull into his ADIRS leave. ADHIRSS will yield the bingo shares. I Does don't play. think want to play it. And the bingo's through the E, radishes and air sheds about to be blocked for him. So uh, just a killer turn of events for Andrew. His bingo blocked by Will's bingo. And uh, he's just going to have to roll over and lose at this point. He's been uh, hit by a, a run of poor luck, but also just mowed down by one of the best Scrabble players on the planet right now. Here it comes. So Traveler 15 making his Traveler play. Wanderer 15, of course, Will's username on the internet. But uh, Traveler coming down, 62 more points. Oof. Someone in the chat very kindly saying that DC Scrabble, nothing to sneeze at. I've been running a club at middle school and elementary school, mostly middle school for the last few years, uh, for the last uh, 15 or 16 years since a, a little girl went to public school, elementary school. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that, Stefan. Who's that little girl? Where is she now? Oh, she's in Alaska right now. Uh, her name is Chloe, and she is rated 1880-something, 1890. She'll be 1900 um, any day now. Absolutely. She uh, 
she had a tough call to pass up playing in the uh, in the SPC this summer, but she took a job at a school that she had attended during the pandemic, during her college gap year, uh, and felt it was too much to pass up. And I kind of agreed. There will always be more Scrabble. 2000 will be sitting out there for her. Very achievable. Very proud of her. She's put in the work, learned the words, learned the strategy, thanks to good friends like Jackson Smiley and Josh Sokol, the current, the new champion of North America, who served as her mentor really during the pandemic, playing constantly, working with her constantly, Zooming and playing late nights during the pandemic. Uh, love those guys. They are good friends of mine, and I am incredibly uh, humbled by their support for for Chloe. And that's the kind of you know support we get in Scrabble, right? Mentorship, friendship. Um, if you're interested in learning how to do this well, you can do it well. If you have the ability to learn the words, you can go out and learn the words. Um, and that's what Chloe did. Um, and I'm super proud of her as she blew by me during the pandemic and uh, on her way to the very top levels of the game. Super psyched to see what comes next. It has been uh, super cool watching Chloe rush up the ranks and get so good at this game. And the level of analysis and thought she puts into her plays now is legitimately impressive. She'll be 2000 one day if she wants it. Uh, not exciting to come next for Andrew is Will's next play. He's got Zoe A for 70 points to the E in Weddy. So he will not bingo this turn. Wow. 70 more points. Will wow. Be able, uh, over 500 in this game. Will maybe holding off on making that play because he is worried about drawing the Q out of the bag. There are just nine unseen tiles. We'll go ahead and display those now. And perhaps got to make sure he's not going to get bingoed out on and catch the Q. Uh, N-N-Q-R-S-S-T-T-U in the bag. But I see two different eyes, one in Uplifted, one in Radish, another one in Sea line actually. So Q sticks, not a concern here. Likely just want to make sure he doesn't get bingoed out on, but Zoe, 70 points. Man, Will just will not stop scoring this turn. And at this point, Matt, do we start thinking, yeah, you know, blowout, always helpful. Spread is going to matter. Um, will at uh, 9.52 coming into this game, you know, we're just over halfway through the tournament, uh, more than halfway through the tournament now. And uh, you like to have this kind of a game to pad your spread a little bit and make sure that, you're up there with the people who may be a little bit ahead of you. David Eldar's got a huge spread, 1,600, but he's fallen back a bit in the standings. Alex Seaholm, 1173 coming into this game. Uh, harsh on over 1,000. Nice to get a big win to kick your spread up. Yeah, yeah, spread. Uh, the only reason Will is ahead of Wellington of Nigeria right now, in fact. So, uh, you know, spread always good to try to rack up point spread or point differential, the different uh, differentiator between players who have the same record. And absolutely, a spot in the final could be determined by point spread, not just point spread. You're always looking for a game where you can sort of uh, turn your brain off. And yeah. that's not to say Andrew didn't play well. He did. He did his very best. But Will just drew so well that he didn't have to think when you have Traveler, you just kind of play Traveler, you know. So getting to preserve some mental energy as well is important for these players as 32 game or 32 games in four days, especially have, uh, having just played the SPC for Will last week. That's a lot of scrabble. It really is a grind to play at a high level so consistently for so long. Uh, so that's going to be a bonus for Will as well. Looks like he's considering just ZA. I think he might be getting a little greedy here. Uh, a, B, E, L, O with N's, R's, oh. S's, and the T's could yield one more bingo for Will. Is that what he's thinking about? 70 seems like an awful lot to pass up here for Will, but he is far better equipped to make this decision than I am. And if he feels like maybe there's a shot here with two in the bag to bingo one more time, maybe he's making that spread calculation himself. Score a bunch with ZA, give myself a shot at another bingo. Yeah, we'll see. But in either case, Will certain to break 500 in this game. Uh, just been a, a treat to watch him on this board once again. And uh, he's thrown down just a, a massive score on Andrew, who got mowed down. Not much he could have done in this one. That play of M-O-V-E-D, very, very strange, very non-standard. One small mistake like that, though, shouldn't cost you 200 points. But 
you're looking to optimize every single move. And Absolutely. if you don't, you know, sometimes it ju does just snowball on you like that. You know what they say, Matt, you can't win a game on the first turn, but you can sure lose, lose one. Yeah, absolutely. And I've lost games on that first or second turn uh, more times than I care to admit. Someone in chat asking if uh, Chloe didn't play her dad on stream recently. And it is true. We have played a few times on stream. Um, I actually have won the last two games against my daughter in Ooh. Albuquerque, the Swilms tournament, where I drew the bag. And in the late bird in Montreal, where I might have prevented her from getting over 1900. Sorry, Chloe. <laughs> but who's keeping score right oh we're keeping score believe me we've been keeping <laughs> score for years i'm still ahead eight seven in uh in twl play but if you throw wigpo in there i think she's got me by one Oof. all right so will not playing zoe i don't know what that was or why that happened but i'm sure he's got some kind of reason i suppose ablo the league is only going to draw two tiles rs out of the bag and andrew in in qstt you uh, or maybe hey, will anderson is human maybe he misses a play occasionally all right what do you think of this word un uplifted good or no good wow the only reason i'm asking is because it populated in quackle it is valid it is um, valid <laughs> wow oh wow that looks like fun As <laughs> chat, uh, Will's been playing TWL all week. Zoe is is Collins. Yeah, there's a Z O E A in TWL, but there's a lot more spellings of it. Zoe, Z O A E A, Z O O E A. Good and Collins as well. Perhaps that contributing to the miss there. Maybe there's a tactical decision Will had in mind. I don't know, but the point spread opportunity. Uh, slightly squandered. We will try to cut to overhead, Mike, when this one is done. Not sure there's going to be a compelling post-mortem, but we'll see if we're able to catch anything for y'all, as I'm sure what Will has to say is far more enticing than anything Stefan or I could be saying. At least me, Stefan. Hey, Stephen. hey, hey. <laughs> uh, will to play out, probably. He's got Labros, L-A-B-R-O-S-E for 22. Also, Robalos or Barolos through the O in economic. And if I'm Will here, I'm just looking to make the last play of the game and get this over with. No other compelling scoring options. Round 19 matchups. Will versus Russell Honeybun. Sammy versus Thatcha. Alec versus Nsikak. Uh, there comes Robalo's will to play out here. We'll cut to that overhead mic here and see what we get. 530 to 321. Um, I have you two extra. Five, two, six, one. Nope, earlier. 98, one, two, three. Um, I think it should be 96. Six. So, so it is somehow. Right? Yeah. So, Plus thirty. Yeah, three, two, one. Well, yep, well done. that was a comprehensive bagging. <laughs> like just, this is a blank spit to multiple yeah, the, chunks. I had the in between turns. I just I didn't have a bad rack really. <laughs> I mean even Avo and Buai, which were my worst racks, yeah. were salvageable. So. Yeah, sure. And then it just turned down the gas. Crazy. Yep. It's just been that kind of tournament for me. Well, it's the time I had a loss, I guess. Has it been a while? You've been on a good streak? Uh, I probably won six in a row. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just letters too good. <laughs> so, yeah, not much to think about. Yeah. Um, I, I moved was a tough choice. I kept USE. So that I could have scored a fair bit more. U S E. Keeping bad rats. So yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Tough. Yeah. So you could you could have played moved. You had an E there. You said. Yes. But it, but that was a much oh. more flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that was... How did I not play move? 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's certainly worse to keep U D S. Okay. No, for some reason I dismissed it. Yeah, that would be better. But uh, yeah, covering the spot is well, worth it a bit more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I didn't have much to counter it with. So. Mm, okay. Probably not a very big difference between the, the two choices. <laughs> yes, well, maybe not. <laughs> Put it away. Okay. Uh, not much of a post-mortem, but Andrew lamenting the move. We expected yeah. him to lament of moved, wondering why he did that. Will, I think, also wondering why he did that. Uh, Will, Will, very, Will very gracious, though, Andrew not buying it when he recognized that he just blundered there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Will doing his best to be nice, but I think he uh, I think he disagreed with that play. You can read between the lines there. Yeah. Very gracious, though. Will happy to rack up 209 points of spread in this game, but a result just coming in. Wellington defeating American Chris Leip by 232. Whoa. So uh, the, the big win for Will, and he still slides down a little bit. His lead narrows uh, over Wellington, Jagiri of Nigeria. So that is spicy. Uh, looking well, a couple, at couple of, couple of big wins for the top two players, though, create a little bit of mental distance, if not numerical distance in spread. And that's got to help both of them in terms of just their confidence game to game. Certainly helps me. They're a little more balanced than you or I would be. They go game to game, rack to rack. But when I get a nice big win, it does lift me up and make me feel like, okay, things are, things are looking good, but things are, are always looking good for Will and Wellington so far in this tournament. Yeah, always good to have one of those easy wins where you score 500 points and don't have to think about much. Uh, Alex Seaholm also dropping over 500 points last round in a win over Canadian Matthew Tunnicliffe. So uh, three guys at the top with three big wins to keep them ahead in the standings. We're going to cut to a brief intermission here. We're going to watch some results come in to figure out the best matchup to show you all in the next round. I'll drop it in chat once we have figured it out. Uh, but y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes with another game of Scrabble here from the World Scrabble Championship in Las Vegas, Nevada. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 